joined now by Dr. Imtia Suleiman, founder of the humanitarian organization Gift of the Givers. He's coordinating their relief efforts. He joins us now from Peter Maritzburg. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Doc. I know that you've got teams on the ground. Um, the president said in his address that he knew of one person confirmed dead. However, we are hearing at least three people have died. Um, talk to us about the human impact, first of all, what you're hearing in terms of those who have died, those who are missing, and those who have had everything destroyed. Uh, good, good evening, Sally. When we got a call yesterday morning from the SAPS, they told us they had found three bodies, and they said another person was missing in the sludge. And the reason we spoke to them, well, they called us first, and then we offered assistance in terms of search and rescue, but they said they had it under control. There was no need there. Then he went on to say the biggest need, and then he said, and, and whoever we spoke to, the premier, the community people, the farmers, the, the citizens, all said it's a huge disaster. The houses just got washed away. It's terrible. Our animals have been washed away. Animals have been affected. Our life's positions are gone. We don't know what to do. And one lady said, even the fish in the river are floating dead. You know, this item, this uh, material is so toxic, it has killed everybody. We are heartbroken. We, we've, got, we've got no way to go. We are poverty stricken people. Those were the kind of sentiments that we received yesterday. This morning, when my teams were walking on site, they were walking on the sludge. Mm -hmm. And they said they went to homes where people well, you know, had, had either could not move out or refused to move out. And the moment they gave them water, they just drank the, the, that amount so rapidly because they hadn't had water since yesterday morning. And they said the same thing. Look, we've lost everything. We've got nowhere to go. Our house, our possessions, everything is damaged. What do we do? And that's, that was the kind of sentiment from every aspect, from every kind of group. And then there was the additional sadness. Fa a farmer came and said, all my sheep were supposed to go on auction next week, and the entire flock has been washed away. Oh. Other farmers said, we have lost many sheep, cattle have been lost, and people, and other, even other animals, cats and dogs, have been also missing or, or have been washed away. And uh, the, those sheep that were alive, some of them told us, that they drank the toxic water and died because of that. As a result of that, besides the humanitarian urgency, which they all said, water is, cri is critical because there's no water. The water pumps mm -hmm. have been affected. There's, there's no type of water in the town. So water is critical. And then they said, even for the sheep, for the, for the lambs, because the ewes are dead, there's no, no, to, not, no animal to feed the, the lambs. And they require special milk and antibiotics for those lambs, which we already procured and will be, and will be delivered tomorrow morning. Yeah, I mean, this is a this is a farming community as well as uh, having uh, the site of a mine. It is also a farming community. A lot of small scale farmers, a lot of emerging farmers impacted. This is truly devastating, not only in the short term, but also in the long term in terms of their flocks, as you've explained. How many people, by your understanding, are actually homeless at the moment? That's the most difficult part to understand, you know, because we're not sure of the figures. Everybody is talking about the amount of houses that have been destroyed or washed away. But we asked how many people live in this area, and we don't have a prop proper stats. When, when we were doing a distribution this morning, there were more than 500 people there who said they've been affected. But then, of course, other people have been moved away to Bluefontein, and a lot of them didn't want to go. Some of the, quite a few of them have been taken to farms. We don't know those figures. The farmers came apparently and gave shelter to a lot of people in those farms that were not affected further away from the sludge. And in, and in, in this kind of situation, it's quite often when people are so down, they normally go to family and friends in areas nearby the disaster, a nearby town or a nearby farm or, or a nearby, nearby community or a locality. So the exact figures are not known. I think it will take a few more days before we know exactly how many people are displaced. But I can tell you this morning there was 500 minimum, so it's probably much more than that because everybody wasn't there. Mm. So, so it really is a large scale impact and also the concern about the toxicity of the sludge, as you have mentioned. Talk to me about the efforts you're involved with. Uh, we just heard the president saying that a lot of government departments are involved. They're going to help people build up their homes. He's also mentioned a lot of uh, non-governmental organizations, humanitarian groups such as yourselves are on site. How are you all working together and coordinating what you're doing and what specifically is Gift of the Givers doing? Well, the, 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 the organization that we, they initially were the search and rescue teams, you know, and we had offered our assistance, but they told us it's fine, no need to send that. So we, then we stepped out of that phase and went into the humanitarian part. I'm not sure who else has been on the ground because, you know, our, we have been covered huge quantities of support. We've sent in three trucks already. We sent in supplies from Bethlehem, from East London, 
from uh, Johannesburg and the Peter Wellsberg truck should be arriving there in a short while. What we're focusing on is what they've asked for and what we've seen is exactly what they've asked for. It's correct what they've asked for. They've asked for bottled water or any, any form of drinking water. And again, today when we spoke to our pastor, he said, look, we're probably going to need you, we, not we probably, we are going to need new boreholes here because this town has no more water. So there's no source of water supply and we're going to need boreholes. We were looking to that option also, depending on the toxicity and how it's going to affect the underground water. The next thing they ask for is food because they need to cook either bulk food or, or ready to eat food, which we made both available. Then they wanted blankets, they said it was very cold last night, and mattresses for those sleeping in the halls, in the community centers, wherever, we've made that available also. And of course, the last item which I mentioned specifically is the milk and the antibiotics for the sheep, which will be given to the Farmers Association tomorrow morning. We finalized everything this afternoon. We've sourced it in Bloemfontein. It will be delivered tomorrow morning. In terms of housing reconstruction and the ecology and the, and the toxicity and the dead fish in, in, in the rivers, that, to me, is the responsibility of the mining company, whoever is responsible for that. And at the end, the compensation has to come from them. It can't come from anybody else. Right now, of course, we're just dealing with the aid that's for direct, immediate assistance to take over the pressure. And, of course, those people have lost their clothes. We've also got new clothes available for them. One other point that's worrying me is people told us that the rivers that got in, the, 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 sorry, the toxic stuff in the river is moving towards other dams. And the fear is that the toxins will get into other dams, pure drinking water, that will affect communities far away from the current disaster. Yeah, that is really worrying because um, this toxic sludge just moved over this whole area. But if it's continuing to move and to seep into other rivers uh, and water courses, uh, and if it is indeed very toxic, and we're hearing that it is, um, this could lead to a much broader impact. And it is all farming area, am I right? Yes, it's all farming area. There's not, there's, there's no big centers around them. You can't buy anything. You can't stay anywhere. You have to move to Bloomfontein to get stuff, you know, the closest town. I know it's, it's just small farming communities, you know, completely rural. And I don't know if the environmental guys have been on site, but I think we require an urgent intervention from the environmental guys to see what's what's necessary, how do we prevent the stick from spreading further, what measures have to be put in place. I haven't heard anybody speak. You know, well, obviously, I, mean, I'm not, I haven't had time to watch news all the time, but environmental people, as scientists, are going to be critical to be on site yeah. to prevent a further disaster. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, we're speaking to a water scientist researcher later in the program just to try and get a sense of what typically goes into these tailing dams, what sort of chemicals uh, people might and livestock might have been exposed to. Well, thank you so much for giving us an update um, on what your team is doing in coordination with all the others on the ground in Yachesfontein. Thank you so much for your time. That, of course, Dr. Imtia Suleiman, founder of the humanitarian organization Gift of the Givers. He was talking about water. Uh, but also, let me quickly update you on what ESCOM is saying about the electricity supply situation. They have made progress. Uh, they have been able to restore some electricity around the area of the Yachsfontein mine. However, they are concerned about the Ritkale substation. It's inaccessible uh, and they, it's very difficult to calculate the damage and there's a possibility that station is going to have to be rebuilt. So they are making workaround plans on electricity. Um, however, they are saying uh, that people must be very careful when using electrical lines, sockets and appliances um, because there is a chance uh, that those lines have been damaged in some way.